Hello again, uh, I'm Molly and I'm going to give you a few tips on uh, orchid plants today. Uh, a few of you had some questions about uh, what orchids are the best to buy for beginners, how to care for them. I do not claim to be an orchid expert, but I can give you some of the basic tips on orchid uh, choice and care. So the orchids I have beside me today are Phalaenopsis orchids. Um, they are probably the most common kind that you're going to find for sale at local florists or uh, greengrocers. And uh, they're actually, contrary to popular belief, quite easy to care for. The main thing is just getting them in the right environment and then they will thrive. So a couple of things when you're choosing an orchid, um, you actually don't want, even though this is extremely beautiful, you don't want to choose an orchid where all of the blooms are already out. That means it's sort of at the end of its blooming cycle. Um, you want to choose an orchid more that has a lot of really fresh buds on it like this one. So it's got a couple of blooms out, you can still enjoy those, but it's got so many to come. So your blossom life for this orchid is going to be substantially more than for one that has all the blooms out already. So once you get it home, the most important thing is finding the right environment for it. Orchids uh, love a bright, indirect environment. So the best place I've ever seen them do is in a north-facing solarium. Um, really bright windows all around, cool, and uh, no direct light. Direct light can really burn the flowers. If you think where they grow, it's under a canopy in the rainforest. So they never really see direct sunlight, but they have a lot of light nonetheless. And the other thing that uh, a lot of people make a mistake is in thinking that they need a lot of heat because they grow in the tropics. They actually will do better, last longer in a semi-cool environment. So just below room temperature uh, is ideal and very steady temperature as well. Don't put it near a radiator if you're in a heating climate. Um, don't put it near a, a drafty air conditioner, something like that. So keep your temperature consistent, light fairly consistent, nice and bright but not direct. And um, in terms of watering, you'll find that orchids come in two types of potting medium. The first is a type of, uh, of moss and that will hold the water quite well. So you'll find that you don't need to water this orchid as much as one that's potted in the other medium, which is more of a bark chip material that doesn't hold the water quite as well. Okay, so for watering with these two types of uh, potting material, you'll find, as I said, that the moss needs far less watering. So what you do in both cases, take the whole plastic pot, um, ideally keep the orchid in a plastic pot, whether you put it inside a decorative one or not. Uh, take the whole plastic pot, put it in a sink, in uh, submerged in water, let it soak for about an hour, then take it out and completely let it drain. Um, don't water the orchid into a pot where you're pouring water in and it's going to be sitting in the water. That will make it rot. So that's the main thing is just soak it in a sink for about an hour, remove it, let it fully drain either of these uh, potting mediums, but as I said, you'll need to do it far less frequently with the moss material. Let it dry out just a little bit in between waterings. Okay, so the last thing uh, I'm going to talk about is what to do when your orchid has finished blooming. Um, on the stem, you'll see there are these little nodule points at a couple inches uh, part all the way down the stem. You want to keep a fair amount of the stem intact, in fact. So you've got the blooms where they end, go a couple of nodules back, and cut it above one of those. The reason being that if the uh, plant is going to push off a new flower spike, it may do it at one of these nodes. So you want to leave a few of them uh, available for the plant if it's going to choose that route. Uh, the other option is it will push a new flower spike right out of the base. But as long as the stem is nice and green, you can leave it and uh, you may find within a few months that it's getting a new shoot right off the stem there. Aside from that, to have it rebloom, um, give it a bit of a winter, give it a bit of a dormant period, a little less light, a little less water, a um, little cooler location for about six months, then move it to a warmer location, light uh, water, increase all of those a little bit, and that should help spur it to uh, produce a new flower spike. But give it at least six months of a dormant period. Uh, they do bloom about every six months to a year.